No, I don't think she, light. she turned it on. Testing, testing. Oh, now it is. Testing one, two. <coughs> testing one, two. Okay, uh, we're going to call to order. Today's date is May 5th, Board of Adjustment meeting, starting with the Finger Pier and Boat Lift variance request at 219 Palm Trail. Uh, Secretary, would you time to call the roll? Are we moving too fast, Bill? It's okay. I was just speaking with the applicant. You can go ahead. And okay. All right. Uh, Diane. Call the roll. Please. Vlad Dumitrescu. Here. Scott Clark. Here. Alec Hayes. Here. Alexander Candia. Here. Carol Fredericks. Absent. Robert Cohen. Here. Carolyn Williams. Here. Okay. Um, we're going to be approval of the agenda. Um, are there any changes to the last agenda? No changes, Chair. Okay, can I have a motion? Yeah. Uh, motion to, ap to approve the agenda as presented. Second. Okay, we have a second. Uh, let's call the roll, please. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Scott Clark? Yes. Mike Hayes? Yes. Alexander Candia? Yes. Carol Fredericks? Absent. Robert Cohen? Yes. Carlin Williams. Yes. Uh, do we have a second uh, approval? Is that correct now? We have minutes to approve, sir. Minutes. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read. We're going to have the second. Well, Chair, so we'll just ask if there's any board members that have any proposed changes to the minutes for January 6th or March 10th. I have none. None. Anyone else? No. Okay. okay. Since there's no changes, uh, Chair, you can do uh, Somebody can make a simple motion to approve the minutes on the agenda. Okay. Can I have someone? So moved that we approve the minutes of January 6th and March 10th. As listed. Second. A second, please. Second. And we have a second with Alexandra. <coughs> Dumitrescu? Yes. Scott Clark? Yes. Alec Hayes? Yes. Alexander Candia? Yes. Carol Fredericks? Absent. Robert Cohen? Yes. Garland Williams? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so we do the quasi judicial rules. So we have um, public comments for non agenda items first, if we can do that, Chair. Okay. Do we have any, um, anywhere in the public we have? Um, Anybody? Anybody? Uh, no one seems to be in any any items there. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next topic. Uh, we'll go ahead with be the quasi digital rules. Okay, <clears throat> this hearing shall be conducted in accordance with the City of Delray Beach quasi-judicial rules. The applicant and the city shall be permitted to present their case. The public shall be allowed to speak for three minutes each or a maximum of six minutes, five minutes, excuse me, if the person represents an organization or a group of people who are present but agree not to speak. Excuse me, that was six minutes. The city commissioner and the board, members and staff and the applicant may be allowed to cross-examine a witness. The city of the applicant the city or the applicant will be allowed to offer rebuttal testimony. Decision to approve or deny an application or appeal may not legally be made upon personal views as to whether a project is a good project or not, nor may a decision be based on the number of citizens who support or oppose a particular project. The law requires that all decisions must be made on the basis of whether the project meets the requirements of law, the comprehensive plan, and the land development regulations. Okay, so we're going to swear in the witnesses. Diane, how would you like to do everyone? Anyone who's going to speak, time to get sworn in. Stand up, please. Yeah. Okay, uh, ex parte communication. 
Uh, everyone on the board, does anyone have anything to report on ex parte? Just go down the line. No. 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 Okay. And the um, city staff, we're ready to roll, it looks like. Good evening, Rachel Falcone, Planner, City of Delray Beach, entering agenda item 6A into the record, file number 2022-115, for consideration of a variance request for 219 Palm Trail to allow a finger pier and a boat lift to extend beyond the maximum distance from the seawall to the waterway. And the applicant is here to give a presentation. Good evening. Uh, I think I need the clicker. Oh. While he's getting the clicker, I'll just remind the board, um, this is a continued hearing. So any comments or evidence that was entered at the last hearing is still valid and part of this hearing. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Uh, good evening again. My name is Matthew Scott. I'm a zoning attorney with the law firm of Denae Miskell and Backman with an address of 14 Southeast 4th Street in Boca Raton. I'm here on behalf of the property owner. Uh, this is a finger pier and boat lift variance request for 219 Palm Trail. Um, yes, yeah, so hopefully as you all recall, we were here last month uh, presenting um, this application for a variance for a, a, a boat lift and finger pier. Here's an aerial again just to um, sort of refresh your recollection. And then here's the previous request. So I'm gonna speak about this for a little bit and sort of the progress we've made since then. So the pre previous request called for a um, finger pier and boat lift towards the south side of the property. Um, and what we explained to you at the prior hearing was that there are depth issues as shown on this um, plan that make it very difficult uh, to um, get a boat on a boat lift in this location. So much so that other properties nearby, including the South neighbor, obtained a waiver or variance once upon a time so that they could have a boat in the back of their property. And so we presented that evidence and I don't believe there was a ton of discussion about whether there is a hardship, whether there's a unique circumstance necessitating the finger pier. Rather, we heard from the neighbor who's here tonight that there were concerns about the location relative to his property. And so rather than proceed and take our chances, so to speak, we um, received direction from the board about exploring whether we could relocate the finger pier and boat lift to the north to protect the neighbor's views. Um, and so we, of course, proceeded with that option. And over the past month, my client has been speaking with the neighbor. They've been trying to sort of work something out that would work for both parties. And so tonight, we have a request. I'm not sure that we have a complete agreement among the parties, but we're getting closer, and so I'll talk about that more in detail. But tonight, we're asking for a variance from the code to allow for a finger pier to extend eight feet and one inch beyond the 25 foot maximum distance permitted. And then a boat lift to extend 13 feet and one inch beyond the 20 foot maximum distance permitted into the waterway. Now I wanna note, just for clarity, um, our prior request measured the distance from the property line. And your code says you can measure it either from the property line or the seawall cap, whichever is further into the waterway. And so in consultation with staff, we realized that we collectively had the wrong measurement. And so this is updated and more accurate. I want to say that because I'm not standing here tonight saying we are reducing the extent to which we exceed what's permitted. Rather, there was just we needed to correct how the measurement uh, was done. And so here's the existing dock, which is positioned on the north part of the property. Again, just for emphasis. This is the current dimension of the existing dock. Now here's our proposed boat lift and, uh, and finger pier. And so what you see is that whereas before, uh, the finger pier and boat lift were give or take 10 to 20 feet, north of the south property line. So the code requires that it be at least 10 feet from property lines. So previously what you saw was a proposal for that to be pretty close to the south property line. And so we heard from the neighbor to the south that there were concerns about that. So we took it and we moved it um, seven or eight feet north of the middle point 
of the back property line. So if the back property line, uh, the width of that is a give or take 100 feet, we now are positioning the finger pier 57 feet from the south property line. And then also, full disclosure, in consideration of the concerns from the neighbor, putting the boat lift on the north side of that. And so again, here is an aerial because we want to show the water depth, right? We, we want to show that that's why we're here is there's this water depth issue. And so there is the proposed dock, uh, excuse me, the finger pier and boat lift um, in, over an aerial. And here again is our request. Here are the proposed sections, um, which I can come back to if you want to talk about those details. But I don't want to rehash everything. I, I believe, stop me if I'm wrong, that last time there weren't so much concerns with the structures or the reasons why we're asking for a variance, rather the focus of the discussion was that, that the neighbor to the south had some concerns. And so here again is the hydrographic data. Now I want to say, and I think it's important for context, because it proves the point about the real conditions out there with water depth, that the neighbor who is here tonight who has concerns, in fact obtained, and those are the records on your screen, a waiver, which in 2005, I believe it was, the city treated this as a waiver as opposed to a variance. They did obtain a waiver to have a dock which exceeded code and pilings that went all the way out to 48 feet, meaning the city commission 17 years ago heard this, heard the evidence and said, yeah, there's a real genuine issue here and permitted the neighbor to have, in essence, what we're requesting tonight. In fact, the pilings, which are used to more larger boats, are out 48 feet from the property line. So um, further into the waterway than what we're asking for. Now this is not, I'm not, I've done this enough to know I can't make the argument that there's precedent. I know that's not what we do. I'm sharing it because it bolsters the argument that there's a genuine issue that requires this variance. Now um, what we have here, let me get to it on mine because it's hard to see your screen. <clears throat> so what, what we've gone ahead and done is um, taking a look at what's allowed by code. Because it's my, it's my expectation because we haven't been able to reach a point with our neighbor where he has no objection. I believe, and I don't want to speak for him, but I believe we're getting closer. But what I have on the screen is what would be allowed by code in um, the light blue. And so that's 25 feet with a, fin with a, um, a finger pier, 25 feet, and then a um, boat lift on the south side of it, and then that, that would be 10 feet from the waterway. And then uh, to the north is what we're proposing. Excuse me, let me go back, sorry. And so here's just a, another comparison. Again, just showing that if our variance is denied, right, and we have no choice but to comply by code, it'll create this hardship for my client of bringing their boat back into the water, getting it out of the water, getting it onto the boat lift. Obviously, when it's on the boat lift, there's not a depth issue, but it's, it's really about navigating in and out. Um, they'll be forced to build this, and it'll be obviously, it can be anywhere on the property line, but it could be by right, by code, no special exceptions, no special permission, no waiver, pretty close to the south neighbor's property. And so I think the big concern from, from our neighbor is about views. And so we tried to prepare an um, exhibit giving you an idea of a comparison of what would be allowed by code versus what we're proposing as it relates to the neighbor's view. And so what you see is that um, we needed to try to design something that would minimize the impact on our neighbor's view. And so if this is denied, in essence, we'd be building something that would have the same impact on the neighbor's view than what we're proposing because we've moved it so far north while at the same time trying to be respectful of the northern neighbor and not putting it all, all the way up against their property or against that 10-foot setback. And so what you see here is that um, this newly proposed positioning is candidly less visible from the neighbor's property than a non-variant structure. So this yellow line is kind of meant to show the view corridors, so to speak, from our neighbor. And so I'm happy to go through all the, va the variance criteria with the board again, but I think I went through all that 
already. I think that there's not a dispute about whether there is a hardship or whether there are special and unique circumstances. Mm -hmm. We know that the water depths are there. There's um, a property that obtained a waiver or variance for this. Um, we've provided the evidence. Our consultants are here to talk about it again if you'd like. Um, and so if the code is literally applied, it would deprive our client of a right that others enjoy, which is the ability to navigate their riparian rights, right? Their ability to navigate a boat in and out of their property and onto a boat lift, something that other neighbors in, in, in the area do enjoy. And again, these special conditions are not a result, uh, result from the action of the applicant. This is how they found the property. It's how it exists. And again, the granting of this variance will not confer onto the applicant any um, special privilege. There's others that have it nearby. It's not something that's unique to this property. Um, and then the variance that we're proposing is the minimum necessary. So I can go back to that slide if you'd like, but what we showed you is that we're proposing for the boat lift right at the spot where the water depths get to three feet, which our consultants, uh, marine experts, have advised is the necessary depth, particularly in an area where there are wakes and uh, lots of waves. This is not a no-wake zone. Would you mind putting that picture? Could you have put that back up and give you a photo? Yes. Do you mean the one that has the water depths? That's, well, it shows the different structures, location proposed and without a variance. That, that's the one, yes. <clears throat> So while we're looking at that, I think it's helpful to have that up on the screen. I can talk through the remaining criteria. The next criteria, which I think is the, the one in dispute, so to speak, is uh, whether the granting of the variance will be in harmony with the general purpose and intent of existing regulations and will not be injurious to the neighborhood or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare. And so we understand that the neighbor has concerns. As I said, we tried to work through that over the past month, I believe, where we've ended, although he'll, of course, have a chance to speak for himself is that the neighbor would like for us to move the dock, uh, the structures, a few more feet to the north. Our concern there is twofold. One, we'd have to come back again another month, I believe. I believe the city attorney is going to tell you that. Um, but also, we're trying to be respectful of both sides here. And so we thought that this, this point, which is north of center, is uh, respectful to both neighbors. And based on this line we've drawn, this image we've prepared, there's not a genuine issue of affecting his, uh, the views to the north, um, excuse me, to the south, just based on um, looking at what's permitted by right. Excuse me, let me go back. So I can sh also, again, if you'd like, just for evidentiary purposes, but I did it last time, I can show you the images of how shallow it is there. We have the pictures of rocks jutting out of the waterway. Um, we can go over those. I'm happy to answer any, any questions you may have at this point. But thank you for providing us with the direction. I can tell you we've worked really hard on this over the past month, um, and so I'd be happy to, to discuss it further. Um, I, th I think it would be helpful to go through those quickly again because I, it's been a couple months, or a couple right. weeks here. So fair enough. So here is a. Um, site photo adjacent to the existing dock. And then here are two more site photos showing right next to the seawall. So that's the, where the new measurements came from the top of that seawall, correct? Yes, yes. So the, um, the seawall is being repaired and improved separate from this process in compliance with code. The code allows or requires that it be measured from that seawall location. And so it was just a uh, oversight in, in the initial presentation. And the seawall will be somewhat taller according to the new code for the depth, height of the seawall? Yes. How much taller would the, the new one be? I should not guess. I should let the experts speak. So come, why don't you introduce yourself and then. Tyler Chappelle, the Chappelle Group, 714 East McNabb Road, Pompano Beach. Um, we are raising the seawall uh, cap. It will have a, a new cap on that seawall and new wall. And we're proposing the elevation. It's at 6 NAVD. And, and currently it is? Um, Kat, do you know the elevation of the existing wall? 
believe it's three and a half, but is it four and a half? Raising it a, a foot and a half total, so. Okay. So that's each individual property owner would be subject to doing that at their convenience or it's not regulated by the city or county or the Department of Engineers at this point to, to raise the seawalls on all properties through that part of the channel? You're, you're asking whether or not they're recommending that walls go higher mm -hmm. to do sea level rise or something like that? Right. Yes. They, the Army Corps of Engineers is recommending that um, owners raise their walls to um, alleviate sea level rise. Um, there is a city building permit that's required for the construction of the wall. Um, we also are required to get permits from the Army Corps and Florida Department of Environmental Protection. Okay. Thank you. Uh, just to sort of summarize here. So we were here last month, um, and Mr. Chappelle presented evidence of the unique conditions that apply to this property that necessitate a finger pier and a boat lift to extend past what the code currently allows. And so we presented that evidence. Um, I don't believe that there was evidence presented to contradict that there are unique conditions and that this is the minimum necessary to justify this variance. However, there were concerns from the neighbor. So we um, decided to defer with your direction and we took the proposed structures and moved them substantially north even north of center, so closer to the north property line. I think that's reasonable under the circumstances, particularly because our neighbor to the south has a similar structure and needed it the same way that we did, and his is north of center, so closer to my client's property line. Again, we're not here for that, but it bolsters the argument that this is a warrant, that this is a, a solid variance, and so we would respectfully request approval. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the thorough presentation. Um, let me just. Okay, so um, I just want to touch back on what Mr. Scott was speaking of. So these are the existing conditions of the site with the um, existing dock. Um, the previous proposal was southern on the property line and now they are moving it northern per the board's direction. Um, the requested variance now is being reduced for the finger pier. It's being reduced to, um, they're asking for eight foot one inch variance and for the boat lift a 13 foot one inch variance as well. Um, as stated before, the contour lines uh, as you can see here, they are maintaining from the previous request to the current request, they are still maintaining the um, three foot mean low water level. Um, <coughs> and and uh, the required findings are in your staff report. Mr. Scott, um, he did go through them thoroughly. And if you have any questions, I am here. The, and just to touch on the public notices, it was noticed for the previous meeting on April 7th, and due to the continuation, we did not require an additional notice to be sent. Thank you. That concludes my presentation. Okay, so we're going to proceed with a public comment. Thanks for going to the mic. And uh, state your name and address. Thank you. With the yellow, with the yellow line. I believe he's asking for a slide from the applicant's presentation okay. that shows what they could build to code. Okay. Sure. 
Where did her go? This, this one? Keep going. <coughs> Later in the way. presentation, Rachel. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, this one? Okay. Right. My name is Eric Platero. I live uh, just to the south end at 209 Palm Trail. I'm mean, here to tell you about, say, it's some of the deception that they're telling you. It's important that you know some t deception. First of all, I bought the house four years ago. I never asked for a waiver. I never asked for a variance. What I, when I bought the house, that's what was there. It's 32 foot out. What, so when they say we're just asking for what the neighbor next door has, they're not. They're asking for 36 and a half feet. So let me explain. The existing seawall, they're, they're misleading you on the seawall. The seawall they have right now, the face, the eastern face of that seawall is going to get pushed out into the water another 18 inches, and then they want to go from there. So when they say that I'm at 32 feet, I told the applicant, I go, if you go 32 feet, I'm fine. From the existing seawall face, the eastern face of the existing seawall, if you want to go 32 feet, I got no problem. I'm in. Now that's not good enough. They want to go 36 and a half feet. So then he said, hey, how about 34 and a half feet? I go, well, you know, if you go 34 and a half feet, the angles, you can move a little bit north, a little further north. So I asked for an extra three feet north of what we had agreed on, which would have put it at 65 feet from my property line. So, but here's the thing that you got to understand, because in a variance, there's got to be something that's not self-imposed. But it is. What did he just tell you? He said he can put the dock on the south side. He can put it there. The problem is he can't get as big a boat, and he's going to have to dredge it a little bit. Economic. There is no reason why he can't put it 10 feet from my property. I'd rather it be north. Very nice of him to go north. But he wants to go further out into the waterway. So they're deceiving you, which, is, which bothers me. Let's all just be fair here. We've got to be neighbors for the long term here. So what I'm saying is, Go 32 feet, just like mine. I measured it myself. I had another guy, called him three times. 32 feet from the outside of the seawall, I'm good. From the existing seawall, not from the other 18 inches, and then go out 34 and a half feet or whatever it is. I'm fine with that. What we originally talked about was, hey, where the original dock is, is to put the finger there and then the boat lift on the other side. Good with that too. But when he wanted to go out from 32 to 40, 34 and a half, I said, fine, 34 and a half, that's fine. I go, look, just move it three feet further north. That's where we're at. But they're deceiving you folks, and it really bothers me because I got to live with this, and they don't tell you the truth. I never asked for a waiver. I bought that house. What I bought is what I got. When he bought that house, he's a big boy. He had a, an attorney when he bought the house. They saw what was there. They just assumed they could do what they wanted to. Your code says you have a code. Just like last time we were here, you had a single carport that affected nobody. They just wanted to enclose it. But your code said they couldn't do it. So guess what? You don't like the code, change the code. I'm here to say, look, I want to be friends with him. He really is a nice guy. Really is. And I'm trying to be as great as I can. These are $10 million homes. My view is, put it this way, the houses across the street are $3 million. $4 million. So because of the water, this is what we're paying for. I'm saying 32 feet, just like mine, just like mine, from the existing seawall and just go to 65 feet on the boat lift, not on the pier dock. I don't care. You can see over that. But the boat lift, you got to remember the entire boat, which is 22 feet, is going to go from, from where it's allowed to the end of his, his variant. So the entire boat is sitting in the variant, sitting as high as you can be out of the water. Where, and keep in mind, their, their engines are beyond the boat. Okay. You don't put the engines on the boat lift. The engines are even further out, another three feet or so. So I'm trying to comply here with them. I'm trying to do, as a neighbor, do all the things. All I'm saying is do what I got. 32 feet from your existing seawall. If you want to build a four-foot seawall, I don't care. But then it's still 32 feet from the old. And just go three foot north, 65 feet from our property line, I'm in. You got no problems from me. I'll do, I, I got no issue. Keep in mind, okay. the guy on the north, he's going to build the house. We the, he hasn't even designed it yet. So he may end up putting it on the south side of his property. We're, we're, he says, if that we're, happens, we're, I'd like to push it on the north. We're asking you to finish up. That's why they're saying minimum. 
So I'm saying if you approve his variance, next thing you know, you're going to get okay. the next guy. To okay. okay. There is no Sorry. That's okay. It's an emotional issue. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Does the staff have any uh, response to, to that? Ch Chair, let's just make sure there's no more public comment. Oh, that's okay. Is there anyone else that hasn't um, said their objections or support? No other public comment? Okay, staff, um, from the what was said, is there any um, suggestions or uh, Cross qualifications? Cross or rebuttal? No rebuttal, thank you. Can I ask a question? Uh, let's let give the applicant an opportunity okay. for cross-examination or rebuttal first, and then we can go into board discussion. Okay. And uh, is there a time limit on the, there's no time limit for the rebuttal, right? No, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, I don't have any rebuttal for staff. I would note for the record that the city's um, own planner found that our application does comply with the criteria, right? That's just more evidence that the variance is warranted here. I um, just want to clarify a couple things because I don't, I want to make sure that there's not the sense that we're being deceptive. That wasn't the intent. What I was trying to explain was the property to the south got a waiver to have a larger than allowed dock and the pilings that you can see on the screen at 48 feet out. They got that because the city said, yes, this is a unique condition that they need. I know that I, there's no argument that this gentleman did that. I'm rather saying it's currently improved with that because it was necessary. S excuse me, sir. This isn't, you, this isn't your chance to interrupt me. Don't say I did it if I didn't do it. It's, I did not do it. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. I, I'm saying the property has it, which is evidence that there's a unique condition here, right? From a legal perspective, this is a, a challenge. The other thing I just want to clarify, and then I think I'll, I'll wrap it up, two things is if the variance is denied and we have no other option, my client will install what's permitted by code. It will not allow for safe navigation. It will be dangerous and will make it incredibly challenging to use those marine structures. That's why you ask for this sort of variance. It's so that you can safely navigate. So to say something to the effect of, oh, well, they can do it. They said they could. If no variance, then we're going to, of course, build something, but it won't be safe or ideal or give my client the ability to enjoy the use of the waterway, which is something uh, enshrined in riparian rights. And the last thing I would close with is um, the yellow line that we drew that shows that at this point we've moved it so far north that it will be no different for this neighbor if the variance is approved. It'll have no worse effect. And so any sort of argument that this will be injurious to, to the neighborhood is simply not accurate or supported by any facts or any, any evidence presented to you. Rather, the basic geometry is that an as-of-right dock will be sitting in the same position from the south, from a view perspective, as what we're proposing to the north. So thank you. Okay. Um, I guess we'll go to the board. Any other? Okay. Okay, board, um, let's start with Ms. Hayes. Um, do you have any comments that you want to talk about? Yes, I think that's gentleman who was speaking uh, recently, he said that the distance they measure from the new seawall that's going to extend 18 inches farther than existing one. That's, is that correct? So, in that, and that's in the code. That's where they're actually supposed to take the measurements from. Mr. Scott um, it was actually quite candid about that up front, that even though the numbers before you are smaller, today the footprint of this pier and boat lift are not smaller. It's that the code required them to take measurements from the seawall rather than um, the property line. And so they have adjusted the numbers. So um, I wanted to clarify that too, because just to make sure you understand that the size of this finger pier and boat lift have not changed since the last meeting. The proposed location is what's been modified. And so they have the right under land development regulations to install the seawall that they're planning to install. That's not before you, it's not a variance. Um, and so they are allowed by code to use that, or not even allowed, required to use that as the beginning point of measurement. So even if the seawall is expanded and goes further into the intercoastal, that's just something they're permitted to do by code. Mm -hmm. 
I understand. And another question to the applicant. If you could go for a moment back to this slide when you are showing visibility, this yellow line, um, what's permitted and what you are proposing, if you could, could, could go back there. And could you repeat her question? Um, on, the, on the microphone, yeah. Could you repeat her question when you start answering? Um, I believe your question was if I go back to the slide to show the visibility. You haven't asked the question yet. Oh. Just a second. <laughs> if you could explain to us exactly how this line works, how did you come up with the starting point? Because I understand the angle, I understand when you go to the angle of what's uh, permitted and you extend it, it kind of hits the same edge. But what about the beginning of the line? How did you figure that out? Yeah, so we, um, great question because we spent a ton of time on this because we thought this was really important. So we panned down to the um, bottom part of the neighbor's property and then we drew the diagonal there. And so everywhere that you see left of the yellow line, if we build what's permitted by code, if we're denied, there'll be a boat in a, in a, there'll be a boat on a lift in the dock in the same visual obstruction. So the entire property other than the tiny triangle at the bottom of your screen. Because the blue is what we're allowed by right. Meaning no variance, no just submit for permits, Go ahead and build it. And so, 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 first of all, no, you can't. That's not how this works. Is that you don't get to go back and forth. Secondly, secondly, um, so we we wanted to, to to show that to you because, and this was our my client tells me his conversation with the neighbor. You realize if I lose, it's it doesn't get better for you per se. So we should work together. And I believe we got really close, as you heard. I believe the neighbor said on the record, if we moved it something like three feet north, he'd be fine with that. Um, and, and so, yes, if, excuse me, right. If we moved the dock, three, the pit finger pier three feet, three feet north, and then the, the boat lift two feet yeah. interior, he'd be fine with that. I will tell you candidly, it's not normal to negotiate on, in front of the board like this. There's real concerns from our consultants who are the experts that if we do move the boat lift, we'll be in the same spot and have the navigation issues. And, and we'll be running into what brought us here to begin with. But we got pretty close, I believe, although I wasn't in the conversations. So what I'm showing you in this exhibit is that this is, if we're denied, it is my view that the neighbor will have won a Pyrrhic victory. He will have gotten our variance denied, and his view will be just as bad, if not worse, because it'll be so close to his property line. And so we wanted to make that point, although it's really outside the boundaries typically of a variance, right? We, we just show the criteria and how we comply and staff agrees and we have experts. There is a human element that I appreciate, especially with single family homes and neighborhoods and things of that nature. And so we thought this was a really important point to make. Mm -hmm. Chair, before we go forward, I just want to maybe remind um, everyone of the, the conduct of the hearing for quasi-judicial rules. You know, the way the process works, and we've been following it so far, you know, the applicant gets the opportunity to present their case, the city staff presents what evidence they desire, and then the public has the opportunity to comment. Once that's done, the applicant and the city both have the opportunity as parties to provide the rebuttal or cross-examination. That's been done. At this point, we're at the uh, board asking questions and then having board discussion. So at this point, there's no more comment, there's no more interjection unless the board invites it. So I just want to remind, even though this is a very informal setting, that we're in what is essence a large meeting room, this is a courtroom. And just as if you're in a courtroom and judges are giving their rulings or asking their questions, you know, the gallery does not get the opportunity to ask their own questions and interject. So I just remind everybody about the quasi-judicial rules and at this point, you know, it's board discussion, it's up to the board to ask whomever they'd like to ask questions from. Okay, that's very clear, everyone agrees. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Hayes, more questions? Just one last question. Mm -hmm. Now with the new location, you are, you are getting significantly closer to the north property, right? So um, I understand that you are still not exactly at this 10 feet from the side property line, but you are significantly closer, right? During, you know, figuring out where it's going to be, did you guys consult it, the neighbor on the north? Was he ever yes. involved in it? Yes, so the exact dimension from the north 
um, once you include the boat lift, is 30 feet on the north property line. We called, so originally, the north property owner gave us a letter of support. Called, uh, I shouldn't say I, we. Um, my client called and said, look, we're trying to accommodate concerns from the south neighbor. We're going to move it north. He said, okay, well, just do me a favor. Don't, don't move it right up against my property. Keep it in the area of your existing dock. And so that was the discussion. Um, and so we thought that since there's, the code allows us to go to 10 feet, right, or 30 feet, um, we thought that was reasonable in, under the circumstances. And there were no objections? No, based on our conversations, they didn't say that. OK, thank you. I don't have any more questions. OK. Alex? My only question is, um, I, Rachel, I read your report, and you, you find that this meets the rubric, correct? The, the magenta proposed variance. Yes, yes. Uh, through the findings, um, considering the current conditions with the um, mean low water level, it appears that it would meet the findings of the variance request, yes. Okay, and there's nothing controversial that I see in your write-up. Um, was there anything anything that we should know or debate further? Or you, you're good to go here? Um. Well, uh, I do kind of want to jump in just the way in the questions I asked. You know, staff is presenting evidence mm -hmm. just as everyone else has. Um, yeah, the decision makers are really the six of you that are up there right now. Um, you've, I think you've articulated and, and Rachel has agreed that what you've said is consistent with the staff report. Um, whether there's anything additional to add, I think you know, we had the opportunity for rebuttal or additional information and, and everything's been presented. Great, and, and my hope was just to confirm that there truly is nothing controversial here because your report seems to support variance request. Um. <laughs> the, uh, just yeah. the report yes. would, would speak for itself. Just, mm -hmm. And I think part of, part of the problem with that question is, you know, controversial is very subjective. Um, I think you can see that there's at least one person in this room that might think that the request is controversial on some level, as you've heard the testimony. Right. So I think there's a problem just in the way that's phrased, it just how it could be interpreted multiple people and and that you know the evidence is in the reports no, in everything and i'm asking staff not the not the uh mr candia the neighbor staff does not recommend give recommendations so um everything in the report is based on the findings that was provided um that's okay. all i have to add thank you mm -hmm. i do have one question um looking at the last the latest drawing where you have moved the figure pier north and you talk about where it's positioned Maybe I'm missing something. I don't see north-south dimension location on the end of the new seawall, for example. Uh, so I'm not whether that's I don't I don't know how you arriving what the exact position of that is north and south. I just don't see a dimension on the drawing. So it may be because it's hard to see on the screen. Um, the I can go back. There is one that has it. I apologize. This one. <clears throat> oh, sorry. <clears throat> okay, so um, this one has the dimensions north south of the finger pier and the boat lift. I, I, I'm talking about what's shown on this uh, sh the new sheet three of five dated April 25th. That's the drawing I'm looking at. Okay. I don't see it on that drawing, which I see as the construction drawing, not an illustration. Just, I mean, is it not there? Is I, I'm just not able to find the dimension on the drawing when I stare at it, or what? Well, so we submitted a package of revised drawings that included this exhibit, um, meant to be summary. And so we had it dimensioned here, um, but I want to check with Kat just to make sure. You should introduce yourself to the record for the record and explain. Catherine Monger Zone. Um, the address of the office is 714 East McNabb Road, Pompano Beach. 
So the distance is called out at 33.1 feet from where the seat wall will be, and that's the measurement that's used. I'm not talking about the length of the finger pier. I'm talking about the north-south location of the finger pier relative to the end, either end of the sea wall, the new sea wall cap. The north south. So how far from the neighbor's property it is? Oh, <laughs> where? Let's say you put the cap down first. And then you're going to locate the finger pier. Where is the dimension that shows the location of the finger pier relative to either end of the new seawall cap? I just don't see that dimension on here or any other dimension from a property line or the riparian line or anything else that shows where the finger pier is located north-south. I'm just, and we're much key, it seems to me to be a key point here, and I'm just curious as to if, you know, what, what everybody thinks has been approved. If, um, if I may, uh, Mr. Cohen, Scott Poppy, planner for Delray. I, th I think what Mr. Cohen is asking for is the distance from That's the, yeah, uh, the north, north end of the, the proposed finger pier and the northern property line. That any, distance, any reference Sarah? point. I don't care what it is. It shows it 50 some odd feet from the property line, but, which, which is fine. But I just don't see what I'm saying is you show it here in red. I look at what's in black and white on the drawing of April 25th, I don't see any dimension. I'm just asking, is it just missing, just so I got to put the arrow on, or is it floating because you're still negotiating? I don't know. No, it's fixed based on the dimension provided in the exhibit, which is included. That's what I'm saying. I don't see that dimension on the drawing that, was, that was the, I got from the city when I downloaded the new drawing. Maybe I just got the wrong version. Maybe it's just... I don't know. It's on the aerial that was included. There was a distance. There was a distance exhibit in addition oh, oh, to this okay. black I, and I, white I, one. I understand, but I'm simply asking: when the contractor goes out to build it, he's not given the aerial photograph with numbers on it. He's given a drawing. Yeah, these are not construction drawings. Okay. There will be structural, signed and sealed uh, drawings that will be used they, for construction. They will, they will somehow match what's shown on here, but you just added dimension. That the dimension. I assume it's located correctly on this blueprint on the the design drawing. And you just added dimension to show it, I, you know. No, to answer your question, I understand your line of question. This is Tyler Chappelle. Um, the construction drawings will be signed and sealed structural drawings showing dimensions and will be to scale the drawing, <laughs> which will be submitted not only to the environmental agencies that will stamp and approve the plans, they will also go to the city building department, which will also be approved those construction drawings that the contractor will then take to build the, the dock. And I understand that completely. My question is, if we go along with this variance request as illustrated by this drawing that the city mailed out and sent out to us that said this is in your submittal package, what do we know? The city. Where do we know that says when you, that the dimension gets added yeah. to the construction drawings that it will agree with what we've got here in the package? Well, and you'll have, you'll have um, the evidence here shows that the south edge of the finger pier is 57 feet and one inch from the south property line. And then okay. the finger pier itself um, indicates on the plans that it's five feet. So that means that the north side of the finger pier would be 62 feet from the south property line, and it shows 103 foot property line. So, so we would just probably believe that this red arrow shown on this display in the, on the screen here for discussion purposes is gonna end up on the construction drawings just the same way. Well, that's the evidence that's presented. And when they submit their construction plans, the review of the variance and what was presented and the evidence and what this board has approved will be part of that review. Mm -hmm. So that is, you're not approving this specific you know. No, 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 I, I understand that. But the whole issue is, you know, they get to achieve a compromise between the neighbors as to what the location of this repair is. And I'm saying in the package that we got to review, it wasn't clear what that compromise was. Well, and it may not have been, but it, and just for argument's sake, say it wasn't. The evidence here today and up on the screen clearly shows that there's a 57-foot, 1-inch separation between the property line and the proposed location yeah, of the finger that, pier. That I understand. That I understand. Will the building department see this when they approve the drawings to say that it agrees with what was approved tonight? I actually think that that may be part of Mr. Poppy's new position is to make sure that the planning side 
that does this review, what happens gets adequately conveyed, communicated, and carried over to the building department. So I think, okay. I think you've got the exact person here tonight that would be the one to, to help I facilitate that. Okay. Yeah, I just was curious how it was going to get. But what did we approve if we approve this tonight? Okay. 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 I have two questions. I'm, I think I believe it's more to the uh, engineer than... <clears throat> Than somebody else. Do you know what the size of the boats allowed in in in, uh, in this area? I mean, it's a, is a thirty-two foot the maximum? Can be a bigger one? Can be a smaller the size one? of boat in, in the area? You mean what kind yeah, of I boat mean, is utilizing this kind of waterway? Sure. Well, the the waterway, the intercoastal waterway, is designed for an elevation of minus ten. Um, so, depending on what draft vessel can traverse the intercoastal, but Due to this location, it's a smaller vessel because you have the elevations, you know, the hydrographic that we're showing. So you have a smaller center console that's going to be using this. So the zone. 32 is pretty much the maximum, you think, or not even? Um, 32 is probably appropriate, yeah. Okay. And another question is the, uh, you raise the wall because we expect the water to, raise, to rise, right? Or just occasionally well it's two reasons one because it's not an awake zone so you have high wave energy yeah and then two you have sea level rise and um, would that in a way benefit the the situation of the boat being able to get closer to the uh, if in the future in fact the, the water you know gets a little higher than not progressively uh, yes is, it is, certainly I will mean, is help something you consider on your design or is does it really yeah, I mean, the, the sea level rise criteria, as far as what it's projected to be, we're already going to be in a situation with the current design to have a, him being able to get his boat on and off of the lift, probably most likely only at high tide, as it's currently designed. Okay. So we would hope that we'd get another couple feet, because then he may be able to get the boat on and off at low tide, too. I understand. No, that, that's the other thing. The other thing is not much you can do about it once you raise... I'm a little confused about the diagram when you said actually do you raise the, the head, the top of the wall at six foot and it looks like it's four, four and a half. That means actually, yeah, it's about what you said, right? I mean, a, a foot and a half more. A foot and a half more, right. Then what's now? On the other side, on the interior side, the, the property remains kind of sunken. How you, it doesn't matter how you access the, the top of the wall and then I assume the dock is at the height of the top of the wall or how is that? We have the dock um, on two elevations where a section of the dock will come down lower and a section will be higher, yes. Okay, so it's actually floating dock? Uh, no, it's 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 fixed dock, but it's the fix has two different high. elevations. It has two different elevations, okay. All right. I, just to have a comment that I find a good thing that now the, the lift is on the other side, I think that actually improves quite a bit the... the uh, circumstances that we're discussing now, so that's my Okay. I have a few questions, but Mr. Chappelle just answered it, so <laughs> I'm all set. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Okay. And to our knowledge, uh, I believe you qualify that the uh, engineers have approved this dock and finger pier and lift as we see it, you don't, you won't need to negotiate once you leave here. Whatever we decide tonight, with is that correct? It's, it, I mean, you you have a proposal from the uh, engineers in the water who has the control to go ahead and build this. Is that correct, or the, are they waiting for us to for, to, to give you the, what they're going to let you do? Um, we've designed it based on the criteria that they provide, their policy and guidelines as far as the setback from the channel. So that is, it does meet that criteria. We have not received permits for that because we're waiting for this, you know, it would be um, premature for us to go to the agency, spend all that time and money if the city's not going to allow the variance. Mm -hmm. So we came to you first. Okay. But we know the criteria they require and in our experience in doing other projects on the intercoastal, it meets their criteria as far as the setback to the channel, which is what they're looking at. And then they also look at resources. Okay. But as far as property owners, other people with boat docks, they have no uh, issues that they can present when you do your next step after tonight? 
No, they they will look at navigation and resources on the regulatory side, and that's what they're addressing in their permitting. And as we're showing it, that meets their criteria as far as navigation based on what they've approved in the past and what the policy they have in place now that they require us to follow. Okay. Okay. Um. Ms. Hayes or Kendia, anybody else have any other uh, questions that have, did you feel we should discuss tonight? Okay. Chair, if there's no further discussion, um, this would be the part where I would go through the board order. Um, as a reminder, there are six elements that uh, both the city and the applicant have gone through. I'll read each one individually. Uh, Diane would then do a roll call. The Land development regulations required five positive votes from this board in order for it to be a positive finding. Um, if any one of the six elements receives a negative vote, then the motion has to be one um, to deny the variance. Uh, before I read the board order, uh, Mr. Scott, you, know, you asked me earlier, uh, just confirming it is five, whether there's six or seven members here. Um, do you wish to proceed even though we don't have a full board? Thanks for asking. Um, so a lot of cities, if it's not a full board and there are still concerns, um, gives the applicant an opportunity to come back um, with a full board and defer. Um, you were kind enough to make the motion to give us direction. Um, we've worked really hard to try to make this work. If there are still concerns and you want to give us direction, we would be open to that and, and would come back. Um, and so we, we will kind of want to fall at your mercy on this if there are still concerns with the location. I think we've gone ad nauseum about the issues that give rise to the need for the variance, but the north-south location um, we'd be open to if, if that was the desire of the board. Are there any additional comments from the board on that? Um, let me... Do you want to... What do you think? Give them advice to... Um, so one thing I would caution is I, I would not advise the board to make like a preliminary vote um you know mr scott has heard all the comments the board has had all the questions they've had if there's any additional questions or concerns i think the board could raise them in response to what mr scott has said but i do not advise the board to give a temporary yes or no or some indication that would be your vote which is where we'd be moving to next so can i, can I continue with again with direction or we can't hear you oh this second, um, I was asking if we should, I'm asking the chairman or the board actually that if we can consider the continuing direction or further negotiation between the two parties. Well, from what um, William just suggested, basically the decision to ask us for a different uh, voting schedule, that would be up to him to wish to come back. Nothing to do with our modem at the moment is that correct oh, the consensus of the board wanted to express a desire for them to continue working on what their request you could communicate that and if the applicant wished to do so he he could accept or request that type of motion um, i just wanted to caution the board don't think a member should go so far as say say I, I would approve this so i don't need any more evidence you know just if the board has any comments or wants to discuss whether it should be postponed, they can. Otherwise, you know, Mr. Scott can indicate whether he'd like to proceed or not. Well, well my board, everyone heard what um, our attorney said, and I think, should we give each other a minute here just to think about what we're going to do? Qu quietly, I don't believe there's any more questions, but I think it's, it's something we... Uh, think each of us internally for many here about what your vote's going to be. I, I don't need further discussion. Okay. I read the report. I heard the neighbor's response. Okay. Yeah, I think it's as close to compromise as it can be. So at this point, I think we should proceed. I don't know that further, further agonizing is over is going to get us any closer. Agree, yes. Okay. So, Mr. Scott, just to confirm, you proceed with the six that are here and available tonight? 
Yes, sir. Thanks okay. for giving Great. me that courtesy. All right. So, Chairman, I'm going to begin reading the board order. Um, after, like I said, each element, I'll have uh, Diane do the roll call. There, um, these are written simple and straightforward, so there's no trick questions. If you believe that the element has been met, the answer is yes. If you believe it has not, the answer is no. This is the Board of Adjustment final board order for file number 2022-115 for property owners Jeffrey and Shelley Likosar. Likosar? Close enough. <laughs> Address at 219 Palm Trail. The request is consideration of a variance from land development regulation section 7.9.7C and land development regulation section 7.9.11A to allow a finger pier to extend eight feet one inch beyond the 25 foot maximum distance permitted and to allow a boat lift to extend 13 feet one inch beyond the 20 foot maximum distance permitted into the waterway. Pursuant to land development regulation section 2.4.7A5, Following consideration of all the evidence and testimony, the Board of Adjustment for the City of Delray Beach finds as follows. One, that special conditions and circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land structure or building involved and which are not generally applicable to other land structures or buildings subject to the same zoning. Diane? Uh, do you Trescu? Yes. Scott Clark? Yes. Alec Hayes? Yes. Uh, Alex Candia? Yes. Joe Fredericks, absent. Robert Cohen? Yes. Garland Williams. Yes. Two, that literal interpretation of the regulations would deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties subject to the same zoning. Diane? Vlad Dimitrescu? Yes. Scott Clark? Yes. Alec Hayes? Yes. Alexander Candia? Yes. Joe Fredericks absent. Robert Cohen? Yes. Garland Williams? Yes. Three, that the special conditions and circumstances have not resulted from actions of the applicant. Vlad Petrescu? Yes. Scott Clark? Yes. Alec Hayes? Yes. Alex Candia? Yes. Carol Fredericks absent. Robert Cohen? Yes. Garland Williams? Yes. Four, that granting the variance will not confer onto the applicant any special privilege that is denied to other land structures and buildings under the same zoning. Vlad Petrescu? Yes. Scott Clark? Yes. Alec Hayes? Yes. Alexander Candia? Yes. Carol Fredericks absent. Robert Cohen? Yes. Garland Williams? Yes. Five, that the reasons set forth in the variance petition justify granting of the variance and that the variance is the minimum variance that will make possible the reasonable use of land, building, or structure. Vlad Dumitrescu? No. Scott Clark? Yes. Alec Hayes? Yes. Alexander Candia? Yes. Oh, Frederick Sapsand? Robert Cohen? Yes. Garland Williams. Yes. Six, that the granting of the variance will be in harmony with the general purpose and intent of existing regulations, will not be injurious to the neighborhood, or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare. Vlad Petrescu? Yes. Scott Clark? Yes. Alec Hayes? Yes. Alexander Candia? Yes. Carol Frederick Sapson? Robert Cohen? Yes. Garland Williams? Yes. The Board of Adjustments has made positive findings for all six of the elements pursuant to land development regulations. At this time, I do need a board member to make a motion to approve the variance. Motion to approve. Second. 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 Roll call. Who's the second? Uh, Mr. Cohen. Glenn Dumitrescu? Yes. Scott Clark? Yes. Alec Hayes? Yes. Alexander Candia? Yes. Carol Frederick Sampson? Robert Cohen? Yes. Carlin Williams? Yes. Pursuant to LDR section 2.2.4D8, all decisions of the Board of Adjustment are final. Based on the entire record before it, the Board of Adjustment approves a variance solely for the purposes as presented at the meeting, and the Board of Adu Adjustment will adopt this order. Okay. I believe that's um, it for that hearing. Uh, thank you all for your work on this item. And
we're on to staff comments. I see Scott's already up there. There we go. I have no comments. Um, it was a, you know, I think we did the right thing and I'm uh, happy we had, we had two, two times to work on it. So um, I guess that's it till next time. Are there any other board comments from anybody? Great. All right, Chair, all you need to do is adjourn and we're out. Okay. Yeah, this is an easy one. And um, the next um, we should all get our vacation request in as soon as possible, right, for the like Labor Day weekend. Are we, do you know the date for sure for Labor Day weekend, September? September something, but... Uh, <laughs> well, I didn't know how they celebrate it because, you know, that's... Um, I'd rather know now we're going to have a case or not have a case tonight. Since it's, since it's on a Monday, I, I, I don't think there will be a conflict. Okay. That's, that's the best way to let it go, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go. Meeting adjourned. Have a good night. Thank you, guys. Have a good night.